excited. Yeah, I am excited to see everyone soon. I told everyone to be here. 250, which means <laughs> that Three. may not happen. Um, so to say that is also going to be recorded as well. So other people have showed up that are not not the participants. <laughs> So this event's going to be recorded and I'm going to edit it so that it will go online and be captioned for viewing. It's not been cool. Hi. Hi, Jen. Can you hear me? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Hear you. Hi. Oh, Hi, how are you? You got the canister one. I'm trying to get the new one in case the old one runs out because we used a lot of it yesterday. I am way too scared to use the gas canister ones. Really? Um, yeah, I don't know why. It freaks me out because I'm like, what if it explodes? Not that it's Well, gonna... I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I can understand. Hi, Michelle. Ooh. I'm going to test it. Usually somebody else does this part. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi. Jen. I haven't seen you forever. Hi, Michelle. Click do. Um, so I'm going to do, Muriel, I'm going to do my reading with my own cam, and then I'm going to join Kazumi at the other cam where okay. the hot pot is okay okay all right yeah no one's in trouble if they don't have a hot pot directly in front of them hi michelle michelle p hi everyone hi i'm just trying to figure out my setup here i have so much sliced beef in front of me it's very <laughs> exciting you have to represent because that is <laughs> yeah here hold on let me show you guys what i have Ooh, look at that spread. Look at that layout. It's beautiful. I have a modest spread. <laughs> Mine is just a snack because I'm I a snack all tonight. Stuff yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Um, so we're just waiting for a couple of people to trickle in. I see a lot of people in the waiting room already, but I wanted to spend a little bit of time just going over stuff with all the readers um, for the reading. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people have said that this event was something they were very excited for. I don't know how many people are actually gonna hot pot with us, but hopefully this will be some inspiration for folks to do it if they aren't. So very, very exciting. Do you all have any questions? Oh, Michelle, you're muted. Oh, I know, sorry. I was telling Alex to grab things for me, so. <laughs> I, I don't have any questions. I think I'm good. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna go pee. Go, go do. Yeah, everyone, go do your thing. Also, well, no one's on the screen, so I can't introduce. <laughs> everyone's kind of running and doing their thing. Um, make. Host. Okay, I'm unmuted now. And it's so weird to be zooming with it so far away from me, but I feel like that's the only safe thing with this. I do have several cautionary notes for everyone to make sure that their devices are at a safe distance from their hot pots. Um, I'm making everyone a co host because I want to make sure that in case I get um, kicked off, that you all can keep the reading going. Thanks, Muriel. Thank you all. We're just waiting for a couple more. And then I'm going to go over some instructions, guidelines for you all. Um, 
I'd asked before, do you all have any questions about what's going to happen today? I don't think so. Thank you, Muriel. Yeah, of course. I'm so excited to see you. Okay, so people are going to read. This is Kathy. Uh, I don't have a beautiful hot pot set like some <laughs> uh, But um, we dedicate our, what if I, I, I picked watercress, but I don't have watercress. I have like arugula. <laughs> Are you gonna boil arugula? I mean, you could. I don't know how that would go. Oh, okay, good. I didn't bring it. Dan, I like your shirt. So is that gonna be okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because then we can yeah. sign in here mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, happy Friday, happy new year. Happy New Year. Like, who is this voice? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just Dan's assistant today. Mm -hmm. Hi, friends. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, Muriel, can I check audio? Can you hear me when I put the mic over here? Or do I have to talk to you? To the whole check that? If you put it closer, it's better. If it's okay. a little farther far away, it's a little We're going to have to do okay. this. Um, so Sally's going to be running a little late, so um, I'll just go over things about her. First of all, hi, hello everyone. It's so good to see you. Hi. Um, my partner Brandon is off screen. He will be um, my sous chef for the evening, <laughs> as in like you'll see a phantom hand from across the screen every now and then um, to facilitate the hot pot, hot pot process for me. Um, a couple of things before we start. Um, a safety note, please make sure that your hot pot is within a safe distance away from your computer or video conferencing device. Um, I have to do this too, but if you could just put your pronouns in your um, video too, like oh God, you're so um, that would be <laughs> great. Dan is if what? You put someone, nothing, I was just saying, the renaming your your video and someone can do it for you who's handling your who's who's handling your camera work right now i got you um tom sadeko <laughs> hi tom hey, hey. <laughs> tom is a filmmaker so this is perfect oh god your hot pot is huge that's amazing <laughs> it's like dan is getting cooked in the pot right now holy <laughs> Shit, it's awesome. It's amazing. You need to see this whole thing. Look, look at this whole. Oh map. my god, I love it. It's that's fucking gorgeous. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stay wide here, probably. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Tom. Yeah. You know, you know the best thing. Um, <laughs> okay. So a reminder about the prompt too. Um, the prompt again is to choose an ingredient and to talk a little bit about it. Awesome. What was it? Hot pot New Year. Oh, you can look on Facebook. It's, it's somewhere there. Yeah, Lunar, yeah, hot pot New Year. Tiny URL. Tiny URL. Hot pot New Year. Perfect. Um, so yeah, again, the prompt is to pick an ingredient so nice, and talk a little Thank bit about you. it. You look great too. And, <laughs> we're going to go um, wide and then we're going to read some, we're going to quote it. And then, um, you part the same have that be part of your reading in some way. Um, uh, the order of the events are oh. Jane, Michelle P, Michelle Lynn, um, Dan, Jen, Kazumi, Chen, and Sally, and then finally Kathy. Um, is there any, are there any issues with the order? Do you want me to switch it up in any ways? Um, I put Sally towards the end because she'll be running a little behind, she says, so. Yeah. Cool. Um, so one, one last thing is that I will be making, you know, in my introductions, make a little note about just, Everything that's been happening right now with um, the anti-Asian attacks in our communities and to talk a little bit about um, how we should do that, work in supporting um, our communities without reinforcing yeah. anti-Black sentiments um, and actions. So I'm sure everyone here is already on board with that, but just, um, just to say that, and if there's some way in which you, I anticipate, might want to talk about it in your readings, um, feel free to echo that message, but I'm going to encourage people to share resources, um, links in the chat um, as we 
go on. So if there's something you want to share too, um, feel free to do that as well throughout the reading. Uh, anything else before we start? I think we can get started. Thanks, Muriel, like for doing, I mean, it's like so thoughtful and lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so excited. I love just like the visual of all your hot pots um, like circling around. It looks really beautiful, um, really cool. I'm glad to see you all too and to have this with you all. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna invite folks in and we can start. Hi, welcome everyone to Lunar New Year Hot Pot Edition. Um, we're gonna get started in just a little bit. Um, as you all enter, I'm pretty sure you all should be automatically muted, but if not, um, we ask that um, keep your um, cameras muted um, and um, there will be a portion of the evening where um, we can um, uh, lift that for the Q&A portion. Um, so as people come in, I'm gonna um, give people five minutes to just trickle in, um, set up their hot pots. I'm going to share just um, a little prompt for you all to consider while this is happening. Oh, just like so. Uh, so welcome everyone to Lunar New Year Hot Pot Edition. I hope you're all setting up your hot pots and you're getting ready to eat with us and listen to some poetry. Um, we're about to get started very, very soon. Um, I just want to invite you all in the meantime, while we're waiting for guests to come in to take part in this writing and eating prompt that I've asked um, some of the, I've asked our readers to partake in for today. Um, so for our readers today, I asked them to choose an ingredient and to think about what it signifies for them um, and to frame it as a type of offering for this new year. So thinking about how Lunar New Year um, signals this time of renewal, um, I want to think about how this virtual hot pot gathering can be a way of establishing ritual for ourselves and to each other, um, and to name some of the hopes and desires that we have for the new year. So thinking about what kind of ingredients you want to put in your hot pot, think about what it can signify um, and what you know about its significance um, that might not be immediately clear to us. Um, and just think about why you want to, why you would want to put that um, in your hot pot. Um, yeah, so just take a moment to um, mull on that and we will get started very shortly. Again, for those who are making their way in, we have a writing and eating prompt for you. If you are hot potting with us this evening, um, please um, be very careful where you put your computer, laptop, or video conferencing device. Um, if you have a hot pot, you know it's very hot. So um, we wanna make sure there is no um, technological casualties here. 
Um, yeah. And just so you know, again, um, when you enter your video is going to be um, automatically muted. And throughout the reading, we encourage you to um, send your praise via the chat box, use the copying function. Um, and uh, during the Q&A portion, we'll, um, we'll let you um, unmute yourselves if you want to ask a question. You can also put that in the chat box as well. Do any of the readers today want to share a little bit about what is in their hot pot or what they're putting into their hot pot today? Everyone's busy cooking, eating. <laughs> Michelle, why don't you start us off? Yeah, I, um, so this is my first time um, making Szechuan hot pot at my house. I've eaten it many times outside of my house. And so it's pretty exciting to make it at home. And I started with a base of um, ginger, garlic, bay leaves, um, star anise, and cinnamon and put that in the wok and then put um, Szechuan peppercorns and the spice packet thingy that I bought and then um, added a bunch of chicken stock. And so that's what's in here. And I just put in my fish balls. And then I'm very excited. Awesome, Szechuan hot pot. Yeah, love that. Yeah, what else is everyone eating? I've got this. Hi, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going to open that at some point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, look, as, as you can see, it's open. Um, <laughs> and I've got the, I've got the little, uh, packets here. I've got some daikon radish, um, some some bok, bok choy, bok choy, and uh, I think I'm mushrooms on, on, yeah, I think I'm mushrooms, so I, I've got a bunch of mushrooms. <laughs> That's great. Um, so Sally will be prepping her ingredients throughout this reading for all of y'all. That's great. So I do have a hot pot. It's just not in my view. This is Daniel Lee, Asian American icon, by the way. <laughs> he doesn't like he he doesn't like cameras. But my hot pot is where Kazumi's Kazumi Chin is. Um, but I'm going to be separate for the beginning, and then I'll go join them. <laughs> where Kazumi is quietly eating right now. That's also my hot pot. Hi friends, so many friends. Oh, oh and the base, yeah, the it's like it's a very modest hot pot. Um, but we are uh, we have a Kazumi prepared a soup base. It's like a very spicy miso. I said like don't put too much spice because I don't want to be coughing during mine my reading. Hot pot is a collaborative effort, so I'm glad that there's occasion for all of us to have some support. Doing it. I currently have my partner here who will be whose hand you will see extending every now and then to help stir this hot pot while I am coordinating um, activities for this event. Eight. So I think we have a pretty good um, I think we have a pretty good turnout. So I think um, we're ready to get started. So Again, welcome everyone to um, Lunar New Year Hot Pot Edition. Um, my name is Muriel Leung, and I am going to be hosting the event this evening. Um, I hope that everyone who is able to be in the audience today has their own hot pot. 
Um, again, if you have a hot pot with you and you have your video conferencing device um, in close proximity, just be very careful about where you put it because we don't want any, um, any uh, injuries or casualties. Um, just as another note to that, uh, for those of you who are coming in just now, um, we are going to have your videos um, and audio on mute uh, for the duration of the reading, but there's going to be time during the Q&A when you can unmute your video um, to share questions or to contribute some of your responses to. Uh, so in the meantime, you can always use the clapping feature or the reaction feature in Zoom. Um, to um, sing your praise, to leave sweet notes for everyone. Um, and folks are um, demonstrating that right now in the chat. That's awesome. Um, and if you do want to ask a question and you feel a little too shy to ask it um, during the Q&A, you can always just put it in the chat and I'll read it out loud for everyone. Um, so again, very excited for you all uh, to join us today. Um, so before we begin, I just wanted to uh, share that this uh, event would not be possible without the support of Kundiman and poets and writers who are sponsors for this event. So a huge thank you to them for helping to make this event happen. Um, you know, when we uh, came up with this idea for a hot pot reading, you know, this came from obviously our um, circumstances now in the pandemic, where typically Lunar New Year is this occasion for a large gathering, for us to gather with our families and our communities in celebration of the Lunar New Year, which is on February 12th or today. Um, uh, and um, we all know that for January 1st on the Gregorian calendar, um, it's been quite a difficult start to a new year. So it's kind of nice to have this occasion to restart um, and to um, partake in some of these rituals and renewal um, that are so important to Lunar New Year. So in lieu of in-place, uh, in-person um, interactions or events, um, we wanted to open up this hot pot um, to all of you all, so it can be like we're eating together um, and together in, in this community spirit. So thank you all of you for joining us um, for that occasion. Uh, for those of you who are uninitiated to hot pot or don't know what hot pot is, it looks a little bit like this. Um, it is literally a pot that gets very hot with a soup base. Um, and you put all types of ingredients in there. Um, everything from sliced beef to fish balls to greens um, to mushrooms. Um, and you cook it and you eat it at the same time with uh, friends or family gathered around a table. Um, it's really wonderful because um, the prep, cooking, and eating process all happens at the same time with everyone. It's very participatory. Um, and so in the spirit of that participatory um, nature of hot pot, uh, we invite you all to take part in that. Um, and then thinking about community too, um, I would be remiss or not um, talking about what's happening in um, Asian communities right now, um, where we've seen an uptick of anti-Asian violence um, and especially attacks towards the most vulnerable members of our communities. Um, and that includes um, Asian elders and Asian women. Um, and it is definitely something that um, we want to be alert to, but we also want to mention too that um, part of this conversation has included, unfortunately, um, a lot of perpetuation of anti-Blackness and some of the sentiments in calls for um, increased police presence and surveillance in uh, Asian American communities. And we just wanna say that we are um, not for that and that we actually encourage Asian American communities to really challenge anti-Black sentiment in this call for protection of Asian American communities. Um, and realizing that increased policing and surveillance actually works against the racial justice that we seek um, and that we need to find other community solutions um, where Asian and Black communities can work in solidarity together as there has been the legacy of us doing that. Um, so this is also a call for our communities to keep doing that work, especially for Asian American communities to interrogate um, these, this long-standing tradition of anti-Blackness 
in our communities, but also to re recognize that this work is not mutually exclusive um, from um, like uh, protecting our communities and working against um, anti-blackness. So let's just be vigilant of that um, today and carry that spirit um, with us uh, throughout this evening today. Um, so before we start again, I want to make another reminder, please be cautious about um, where you put your video conferencing device with your hot pot. I don't know, this is something that I um, and really mindful of as my keyboard is very close to my hot pot. Um, and, uh, um, and just to go over the reading order for today, um, we are going to start with a reading and then we're gonna have a Q&A portion um, that follows after, which you can all participate in and definitely ask questions. The reading order um, is um, not, uh, well, I will say a little bit about the reading is that one thing I've asked um, all of our readers to do is to choose an ingredient that they want to talk about that traditionally goes in a hot pot. Um, and so um, I will be introducing them as um, them as well as their ingredients. So the order of the of reading today, we will have Jane Wong as fish balls, Michelle Pinalosa as sliced beef, Michelle Lin as soup base, Dan Lau as noodles, Jennifer S. Chang as egg on napa, Kazumi Chen as shrimp, Chen Chen as tofu, Sally Wen Mao as mushrooms, as can Kathy Lin Che, who um, in lieu of watercress will now have uh, arugula. So, um, I'm very excited to introduce you all to everyone this evening. So we're gonna get started and we're gonna um, start off with uh, Jane Wong, who is our first reader. Born in the sign of the wood rat, Jane Wong is the author of Overpour from Action Books and How to Not Be Afraid of Everything from Alice Jeans, which is forthcoming in October, 2021. So please look forward to that. She's a restaurant baby and an associate professor of creative writing at Western Washington University. Please welcome Jane. <laughs> Thank you, Muriel. Um, can you all hear me? I'm kind of far from my computer because I was afraid of the, the like disaster of like it falling into the hot pot. So, um, thank you all so much for being here. I happy new year. Um, for those of you who uh, are choice on these, I'll just say in, in my terrible choice on these, Dan, you can laugh at me however much you want, um, but Sunlin Phi Lok. <laughs> um, and it's again, nice to see all your faces and be here in community. And uh, yeah, I, I will say that my hot pot is like, like boiling right now and I cannot wait to kind of dive into it. Um, mine is, uh, I'm Jane Wong Fishballs. <laughs> Which please call me that from now on. <laughs> um, I refuse to be called anything else. Um, so my ingredient fish balls. Uh, so here are my fish balls. They're they're going in like I, I'll just toss them all in now. But um, my little kind of writing prompt uh, about fish balls. I offer you fish balls, little globes of corpuscular row of joy. Rolling around in broth, how a dung beetle rolls in its beloved jewel. I offer you what defrosts first, diving into our collective ginger dream. And yeah, I think I'll just read two poems. Um, thank you all for being here. It's so good to see so many great friends um, and also new friends, I hope, um, on the, the Zoom land. Um, so uh, this is a new poem, um, I think, the only person who has probably seen it is Michelle Penulisa. <laughs> so, um, but it's actually about fruit. And I don't have fruit right now, but after hot pot, um, I'm definitely gonna have some oranges. It's also a very lunar new year to have citrus. So fruit for me is all about love. So um, here's a poem called Fruit. Fruit, as in love, as in gleaming apple peels, coiled incense, or the ribboned spiral nectar of some flush snail. My grandmother digs her nail into the eye of a red grape, piercing it just so. Just enough to peel this plump jewel carefully, 
this marvel of a dangling globe into my honeyed baby beak. In 1986, a parade float carries a bowl of mangoes through Tiananmen Square, air pickled with summer salt. Golden pink cuts of mango sun sliced in oval obsession. A villager said, so what? It just looks like a sweet potato and was executed as a counter-revolutionary, just so. Memory as in fermenting fruit, as in what history went to rot, what poor gurgling ground, fallen pears soured in glue stick heavy song. A flash of green amongst all this night. My mother leaves mandarin peels along the windowsill, little curled palms of citrus sleep, drive for tea, future heartaches, what collides next in sleepless disaster. Love as in fruit, always and sometimes only fruit, flies lapping at the missing rind's periphery. Today, I pinch open a dragon's eye, tree bark chipping back a light bulb of sap flashing forward. This soap berry, my habitual offering to peel any sweet thing for my beloveds first. And I was gonna read our last poem. That's about a garden. This is called Overgrown. The garden in which we kiss all the beetles silver and stupid. The garden in which leaves simmer in oxtail broth and chili oil so thick it becomes a type of leather. The garden in which we kiss all slow spit and basil tongue and rosemary brow and I no longer want to be orderly. The garden in which the marrow of memory melts and hisses in a scallion scented walk. The garden which never left were never leaving in which an imprint in fog was not a shadow shouldered in mid-rib ache. The garden in which we listen so closely, our ears grow ears. The garden which my grandmother plucks carrots up from their leafy tails, each tuber breaking so easily she laughs down to her wrinkled toes. The garden in which spiders knit a telephone whispering the future, the future to each other. The garden in which my brother spoons a fly out of his cereal bowl, wings awash in sweet glue. The garden in which no one asks, are you sure, or what did he ever do to deserve, or what's the context? The garden in which sunflowers wave their heads, heavy with seeds we crack and whistle back and forth. The garden in which my dream daughter sees her reflection in a pond and thinks I look exactly like my mother who looks exactly like my mother who looks exactly like my mother and so on and so on. The garden in which we never left home, in which we never left home. The garden in which we repeat what we must, packed fractals of dahlias. The garden in which I nursed blackberry brambles back to life for this is how bad it got. The garden in which my mother cradles me close her jade bracelet clanging against my xylophone ribs, singing, this heart I made. The garden in which we lick the stink of a wound. The garden in which ladybugs pour out of a water pitcher, little rubies gulfing aphids. The garden in which our ghosts lie down next to us in the dusk, heavy and full of rice and caramelized onions, lips dripping with stalactites of sugar and salt. The garden in which I spin the algae in my teeth to make a net to carry us to safety. The garden in which we let grow that which grows taller than us. The garden in which I carry the soft intestines of our survival. The garden in which the spiders, they telephone again and they say, stay, stay. The garden in which we have whatever we want because we deserve it. Thanks everyone. Happy hot potting. Love you all. Hey, Jean. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, oh, thank you. Um, again, please send your praise or use the clapping reaction. Um, speak out lines that really stood out to you in the chat box. Um, yeah, we love reading those um, when the reading is going on. Um, so thank you, Jane, for that message of abundance. Um, that um, you're putting forth. And thank you for starting us off on that note. I love that so much. Um, and in continuing that conversation, uh, I wanna invite our next reader um, to read. Our next reader 
was born in the sign of the water pig, Michelle Pinalosa. She's the former author, she's the author of Former Possessions of the Spanish Empire, winner of the 2018 Hilary Gravendike National Poetry Prize from Inlandia Books. Um, and she's also the proud daughter of Filipino immigrants. She's born in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. She now lives in rural Northern California on the land of the Round Valley Indian tribes. Um, she is also our sliced beef. So please welcome Michelle Pinalosa. Thank you. Thanks so much, Muriel. Thank you, Jane, for that beautiful reading. And actually just to share the fish balls that are in my hot pot right now. I just noticed when I was um, taking them out today, the brand is literally Jane Jane. So, I mean, um, so I just wanna uh, offer you all, I'll, I'll do it now. I offer you, hold on, let me find the best piece because I wanna give you all the best looking piece. I have a really big plate of beef in front of me. I offer you this sliced beef finding you the fattiest part. I hope for all of us to consume this fat and iron, for all of us to gather uh, strength from it together, for us to have this richness to sustain us. It's the year of the ox and what I hope for is for us to find what sweetness and tenderness we can outside of burden. So, and I offer you a piece that is exactly cooked as exactly as you want it because some people like it well done, some people just like a little dip. So however you want it. And I'm not going to eat this piece yet because I need to read. So I will, I won't give you that cook, cook, uh, cooking show satisfaction quite yet, but after I read I will. Okay, I'm just gonna share one poem with you today that um, goes along with my ingredient. Just saying. I'm sorry, I ate all the beef jerky. I know you wanted some, but I ate it all. It was salty and chewy and delicious. You make fun of me for turning everything into a poem. Farming's taught me how hard it is to actually turn anything that runs on a gas motor. The ditch witch and the rototiller pull you forward and in only one direction, in, in only the direction you choose to go first. A pull in only one direction is what I feel most these days. Why I stuff my face with beef jerky. We've sunk our money into the ground, hoping what grows will turn into money and that money will turn into the life we're trying to grow. Calm down, I'm not talking kids, but I am trying to talk about something. Something like abundance, which comes from Latin abundantia, meaning overflowing, like the way you fill our cups with water each night and place them on our nightstands because we need to stay hydrated. I'm always wanting and needing so much. Can need be overflowing? Can need brim over? I'm sure there's something here I could relate to farming, how it's not about transformation so much as moving mass. Pallets of dirt, buckets of compost tea from one place to another. The wheelbarrow always in use, never resting, full of seabird pellets, with so much depending not upon it, but on the strength or weakness of our arms on any given day. These days, I don't write anything down, but I listen. I actually hear the sound wings make when birds fly. What else could be more like a poem? Maybe that face you made when I did not answer when you asked, what happened to all the beef jerky? Thank you all so much. Um, I, I, I see people saying things in the chat, but I can't respond because they're too far away. So I'm gonna look in a moment. But anyway, happy new year, everybody. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, in summation, lots of praise um, and lots of um, very hungry people. <laughs> um, 
um, who also resonated with um, your your take um, so much better than William Curl's balloon. Um, what a great collage of um, that text and then revision of that. Um, I'm excited to welcome our next um, our next reader, who one may argue is like the most important part of the hot pot, our soup base, and that is Michelle Lynn who is born in the year of the metal horse. Um, Michelle Lynn is a poet, mixed media artist, and author of A House Made of Water from Sibling Rivalry Press, and as a Northern California regional co-chair of Kundimon and co-curator of Kearney Street Workshops literary reading series. She works to build loving, transformative spaces with APA writers and writers of color. She is also co-producing KSW's first podcast, which is going to launch this spring. So please welcome Michelle Lynn. Hi, friends. So excited to see so many people that I know and miss very, very much. Um, I am soup based today. So here, I don't know if you can see. Um, but with the soup base, I offer you queer love, friendship, and protection in the new year. May it cradle you accept you, keep you warm exactly as you are. Mm, spicy. The tongue is not a metaphor. It is what I kiss you with. The touch of your lipstick on the napkin left on the table blushes a country of your own making, and I have never been more in love. Untrue, I'm in love harsher each time I fall apart, which is the most Scorpio thing I've ever written. And I don't even know shit about astrology. I just like to make fun of myself and my ridiculous ideas like this one, an entire country founded on kissing. Is it so impossible to imagine a making founded on tenderness? What could it look like if each time fallout glitter on our love's collar, brilliance and new nation and tongues, so many tongues rested in anthem? Well, I don't believe in nations, but I do believe in tongues. How yours match your lipstick and the kisses you leave behind on the banquet turntable after a good spicy soup I don't believe in anything being found unless it's us rounding around the corner and being startled by ourselves in some window and how low our shoulders look at peace together. The stars tell us, I don't know, I can't read stars or signs, but I do read your poems. So I know when I say that all my life, my body has felt like a just scabbed rupture, one that's not even mine, that you'd know what I mean. My mother would pinch my belly hard and when pushed away, bear down hard to say, I made this body, it is mine. My mother was the first to teach me to leave myself, to have no ownership. My mother prepared me. Find myself, I don't know her. Make myself, as long as you're with me. Okay, thank you so much. I had like a few other hot pot things, but I couldn't multitask. Here's another one. And get my good angle and then here's another one I like this one it's like it's like a community thing <laughs> but um thank you so much for being here the full hot pot is actually in Kazumi's window wave Kazumi so after I'm done I'm gonna join Kazumi and eat the rest <laughs> that's in the hot pot but I just really wanted to do this but thank you so much thank you so much the lipstick brand is Fenty, of course, and oh God, do I have it? It's like the dark burgundy. I only wear the, the Fenty Stena lip paint. Thank you for asking. All right, I will leave now. Thank you, Muriel, for organizing this. 
Um, this uh, event is also vying for a co-sponsorship from Fenty Brand too. So thank you, Michelle, for throwing us off with that. And for the multimedia presentation, we were not prepared for that, but we are so glad. Um, thank you for also like giving us a little bit of um, a sneak peek into Valentine's Day with that queer love poem um, and poem of many, many, many things. Um, uh, I am very excited to introduce our next reader, um, Dan Lau, who is our noodles uh, for this evening. Born in the year of the Woodox, Dan Lau is a Chinese American poet. His poems have appeared in Rhino, Colorado Review, Bellingham Review, Tinderbox Poetry Journal, among others. Born in Queens, New York, Dan now lives in San Francisco, California, and works as a development director at Kundiman. Please welcome Dan. Oh, and it's time there to we go. Oh, <laughs> so turn off all sound on the other devices. Sorry, I ruined your ears. Um, hi guys, I'm really excited. So you, you, if you haven't noticed, I live with people in production and they're very good <laughs> at making sure that I look my best. Um, you look great, Dan. Oh, thank you, Tom. Um, big thanks to Muriel and everybody who's, who's like made this thing happen. And it's just like all of a sudden it materialized, right? And it, now we're just all eating dinner together. Um, so I actually wrote my toast because I tend to get lost <laughs> in a lot of the, um, my, my thinking. So I'm just gonna read this. This is my noodle entry. Mm -hmm. So my toast for this reading is to the noodle. And I'm sure most folks at this reading have associated the ritual of having noodles for a long life. I wanna explore the other ways we can interpret the noodle. I feel that the humble noodle starch, water, salt, and time represent the resourcefulness, integrity, and fortitude of our community. Also, its pliable nature lends to its adaptability and its stretch under duress uh, represents its resilience. Additionally, noodles have a wisdom built into their composition, knowing when it's best to sever itself and cut its losses under two feet pressure. So it's like, you know, protect yourself, right? Um, Alone, one noodle isn't much, but together, pinched by chopstick or swirled with a fork, Oi. noodles can stave off hunger and meet everyone's needs. Each noodle, though solely aligned by their gastric destination, has its own journey. Consider the bowl a scatter plot, a three-dimensional plane rife with intersections where noodles meet and part and provide one more strand toward the collective path of purpose. So I gotta get my, I gotta get these, these are ready. Um, so with, ah, do we have noodles here? Pork, pork, noodles. We okay. ate them all. Ah, They're just slippery. Slippery. So with these noodles, ah. <laughs> okay, let's just pretend this food joke is noodles. So with these noodles, I offer you and your loved ones the collective strength you need in the new year to lead a healthy and happy life. Um, and, <laughs> okay. And so um, I wanted to take this moment as a challenge to write an occasional poem. So I wrote this poem this morning. So forgive me if it's <laughs> stilted and bouncing around. New Year's morning, 2021. This morning, our city speak in steam and everything and I extend into blossom. Sepals open for a show of white, then pink and red and red and red. And yesterday, I bought some dumplings from a woman who reminded me so much of my grandmother. I emptied my wallet with a smile. And meager embers woke in me and two blossoms and, and two blossomed and red shreds of luck overtook the streets. Here in San Francisco, I make soup and burn incense to invite wisdom into my home as each jaw stick ashes itself into memory. I too am like this, always approaching the bottom of that thin red sliver as the cherry descends. 
But in New York, my father opens an orange and it is good. In New Jersey, my auntie braids a plate of dough and we want for nothing. And this morning we celebrate and heat broth, pull every tray from our fridges, smile to one another, a red, red smile, and take in these gifts of pleasures and textures and heat. And we stir the fat back in. Ooh. Hey, hey. <laughs> yo. That is my poem. Um, and um, I really, I thank you for letting me eat as an ex like this reading as an excuse <laughs> so I can have something beautiful. Um, and thank you for everybody's warmth and generosity. I can't wait to see you in person one day. <laughs> Until then, bye. Stir the fat back in. Thank you, Dan and company, for making that whole production. <laughs> 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 oh my god, Dan had like the things like it was there, like in your cheek while you were playing Um, the 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 whole extensive production was not requisite for this event, but I do appreciate when um readers go the extra mile for us. Um, so thank you all for, for that. Thank you, Dan, for um, that beautiful interpretation of noodles. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, like, um, and symbolizing, and then to speak about the symbol of noodles as like a collective um, spirit. So thank you for that. Um, next up, we have Jennifer S. Chang, who is our egg on Napa today. Uh, born in a year of the water pig, Jennifer S. Cheng's work includes poetry, lyric essay, and image text forms. She's the author of um, she's the author of Moon Letters, Maps, Poems, selected by Banu Kapil for the Tarpaulin Sky Award, and named a Best Book of 2018 by Publishers Weekly and House A, selected by Claudia Rankine for the Amidon Poetry Prize. Please welcome Jen. Hi. Um, thank you, uh, Muriel, for organizing this. I wanted to um, do the food part first. Um, I found out, I asked my dad yesterday if this was something that he just did or if everyone did it, but he said that it was just something he did for us growing up. Um, so it feels special to share that with you all and invite you all to also do this because I think it's really yummy. Um, so he would just put like a really big piece of napa and then crack an egg in um, and sort of just, you know, ladle the soup over the, the egg. I'm like shaking because I'm afraid of cracking the egg. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let it cook uh, while I read. Um, so with this egg on Napa, I offer you all in this new year a beloved childhood memory in my family's own hot pot tradition, encircled in warmth together, held, sheltered, protected, and finally transformed. And I'm going to read some in progress work. I've only recently started to try to um, write again after having a child. So these are from a series called Forgotten Missives from History. And I don't know if it's like a speculative essay or what. In the letters history writes to me, one ghost is exchanged for another. Here's a gap we grew to expect. In the air outside our home, I always knew what we were. And by that, I mean what we were not. The way we covered ourselves to obscure what was vulnerable. The way we carried our bodies like they were prone to being lost. The things one loses are not always things one can count on the fingers. We are creatures meant to be seen by one another. A hostile environment can be one in which you have lost your will to love. What is ignored? What goes unseen? Who is looked over and then told no? Does migration mean there is nothing to no longer to fear or acceptance of all that is? There is something to fear in these lands, but it is not lost rubber bands or scarce plastic bags. Somewhere in the terrain, we have always known how to love the smallest insects best, how to hold a breathing thing on the verge of losing its most reckless hum. 
In the letters I receive from history, we are people told who we are and then set aside to decompose. Instead of existing, we waft like paper secrets through an empty house, gnawing on translucent fish bones until they are intimate enough to swallow. Inside the house, the shadows we make are shapes so tender, I fold them under my clothes until I weep from their weight. When someone occasionally knocks on the door and asks a question, does your mother speak English? Where do you come from? I do not tell them anything, believing the untraversable silence between us will protect all that sleeps behind me. Every once in a while, I crack open the window for an interval to whisper an abandoned prayer, turning my back before anything gentle can be lost. In the letters, what I already knew, like a small contamination, alien, exclude, allegiance, border, bombs, Suddenly one realizes the world is overly vast and not vast enough. How the word cleave means itself and its opposite at the same time. Suddenly I know why my daydreams as a child were to walk like evening haze into a dense summer forest. Someone teaches me to crave disappearance and in order to betray myself, I teach it to myself again. In the letters, I wish to describe a series of tender catastrophes, how the impact of a foreign body falling from the sky leaves a crater in the earth, how at the moment of contact, the earth collapses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, it's really wonderful to hear your work being read too. And um, I, appreciate, I especially appreciate these moments of um, vulnerability that you heightened and I also I just like love how your work um, can like contract from something so specific and also feel so big at the same time so thank you for sharing that um, I'm really excited to welcome our next reader um, Kasumi Chen who is our shrimp for this evening born in the year of the earth dragon Kasumi Chen is the author of having a cope with Godzilla from sibling rivalry press they are a PhD student in the Cultural Studies program at UC Davis, co-curator of Kearney Street Workshop's KSW Presents Reading Series, and a Kundin Man Fellow. Um, please welcome Kazumi. Hello. OK, so um, I am shrimp. And this is a shrimp right here. I'll do it. I'll Michelle do it. will do it. And so the reason why I chose shrimp is because I don't actually like doing the whole like shelling of the shrimp thing. And so Michelle does it for me. Um, I'm kind of a wuss. And so Michelle here will demonstrate the way in which I eat shrimp, which is you give the shrimp to the Michelle with the tail and everything on it. And then Michelle gives it to you. Okay, so um, I offer you this shrimp, which um, because of my community, um, I, have, I have the ability to eat. Okay, thanks Michelle. Um, so that's what, um, you know, where it comes from, um, why I wanted to do the shrimp because I actually don't even like, you know, trying to prepare it. Um, and I think a lot of my work recently has been in community. Um, I've been doing my PhD and what's become really important to me has been a lot of you all and your poems, um, and the artists around the Bay. Um, and, um, I really want to do justice to the kind of work that I see everyone else doing. And so this poem is a poem that I wrote in community with a few people. Um, one of them is on the reading here, which is Michelle Peñalosa. Um, and Michelle wrote this, these poems where um, she, she mapped heartbreak. She, worked, she, she walked with people through Seattle and talked to them about um, their heartbreak and then wrote poems about it, right? And so there are these poems that are really tied to geography and really tied to place at the same time that they're tied to a certain affect. Um, and I'm in, I'm in communication or in community here with Jason Bayani who did a show called, um, what's it called? Uh, Locus of Control. Um, and one of the narratives in Locus of Control is, is meeting his brother halfway around the world in, in Germany and what it means, I guess, for like these two diasporic Filipino people to from the Bay Area to meet again and in another place around the world. Um, and then I'm also in community with my grandfather who grew up in Chinatown and is now passed. And also with um, the 
artist and photographer Arvina Alejo, who I've been working with a lot and talking to a lot about San Francisco and gentrification and stuff. So you'll hear these four names, Michelle, Jason, Arena, and John in the poem, and those are who I'm talking to. And the poem doesn't have a title yet, but it's like about Zoom, and it's also about San Francisco, so. Um, this is the only place I still love. Even though I haven't crossed that bridge in a long time, even though I haven't seen your streets in over a year, here is a map of my heartbreak. I write it with my feet. I bury it deep in Ohlone land. I bury it here, knowing what lays buried here, knowing what it means to grieve. I record myself in the act, neurons and electrons and synapses. I remember in molecules, the recording, a map, a map of leavings held in photographs, a map of living, our bodies crossing oceans, a map of you meeting your brother in another country in a foreign place, some place where it snows, and how the city refused to speak no matter how many questions you asked. I also want the city to love you, but it doesn't, not the way I do. If I could feed you my words, I would. If we could live off vibrations, if the moment we recognized our names, Michelle, Jason, Arena, John, I summon you back. I give you this map, cold, only from vibrations, captured and reproduced, coding and decoding. What kind of city needs you the way I do? I build a city on top of the city. No, I carry the city on my tongue. And every time I speak, I watch it unfurl. And the space between us, no matter the distance, no matter how far. Hmm. Thank you. Are you I'm gonna, gonna eat your shrimp. I'm gonna eat my okay. shrimp now. I shelled that for you. Michelle shelled it for me. Wait, can you eat it though? I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> okay, see. <laughs> um, citational efforts like apply to not just writing, but also when it comes to uh, prepping food and, eat and uh, feeding it to your um, community as well. So um, thank you for modeling that for us, because me and Michelle, and thank you for, um, for um, uh, the spirit of love and community that always reverberates through your work. Kazumi, really appreciate that. Um, next up, we have uh, Chen Chen, who's our tofu uh, for this evening. Born in the year of the snake, Chen Chen is the author of When I Grow Up, I Want to Be a List of Further Possibilities, Boa Editions. He teaches at Brandeis University, as well as the low residency MFA programs at New England College and Stone Coast. Uh, please welcome Chen Chen. Hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. It's so great to see your faces um, and hear these poems, hear these words. Um, I, yeah, it's just such a generous offering. And thank you to Muriel for organizing this. Um, so I wasn't able to get my shit together and set up a hot pot station. I'm very envious um, looking around and seeing all of you with your setups and eating. <laughs> it's definitely making me hungry. Um, so I'm going to um, start by reading this poem by uh, Jennifer Huang, um, which is called Song of Chou Dofu, or Song of Stinky Tofu, uh, which uh, we were able to publish in uh, issue four of Underblong. Very proud of uh, this poem and getting to share it with all of you. Um, so this is uh, Song of Chou Dofu by Jennifer Huang. And there's an epigraph from Walt Whitman. Um, I celebrate myself and sing myself. A smell before you see and taste. My foul like a hand reaching dimensions beyond human comprehension. I waft a ballad so ancient, so perfect. You'll pray to forget me, exceed me, belittle me. Alas, my stench soaks you. A waterfall of rotting garbage you can't rinse out. I'm a parade of wet socks, cheese, and moldy feet. Relish my complexities. Can you taste what bathed me? Mother Brian flaunted this way of being too much. They say I am too much. Their protests only making my reek louder, happier, 
joyful stench. When they discovered me, it was like Newton and gravity. They fell hard and fast. I kill soft, delicious. You could only be so lucky, so lucky to taste this wicked love. Eat me, oh eat me and be blessed. And so I wanna um, say a few words about my ingredient. Uh, so tofu has been a much maligned ingredient in the US on, and also often mistreated. Uh, with tofu, and in particular, stinky tofu or chodofu, I wish you all the strength and all the magical stench in warding off the white gaze this year in your writing and in your life. May chodofu protect you, empower you, and bring you ripe, smelly, smelly joy. And then I'm just gonna read um, one short poem of mine, a new poem. Um, since I'm wearing the Sailor Moon hat that Muriel got for me, um, and this actually Sailor Moon <laughs> themed jacket, um, so it was very appropriate to read this one for the Lunar New Year. I love you to the moon and not back. Let's not come back. Let's go by the speed of queer zest and stay up there and get ourselves a little moon cottage, so pretty. Then start a moon garden with lots of moon veggies, so healthy. I mean, I was already moonlighting as an online moonologist most weekends. So this is the immensely logical next step. Are you packing your bags yet? Don't forget your Sailor Moon jean jacket. That's where our Sailor Moon jean jackets while twirling in that lighter, queerer moon gravity. Let's love each other, so good on the moon. Let's love the moon on the moon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chen. Um, and especially for always um, never forgetting to shout out the moon in your work. Um, very important to poets, the moon. Um, and so, um, especially because this is the Lunar New Year, um, get to very much um, celebrate that celestial body. And <laughs> yeah, the moon, as someone in the chat, the moon is very gay, yes. So that too. Um, so I'm excited to welcome our next reader for this evening, Sally Wen Mao, who is our mushrooms. Born in the year of the fire rabbit, Sally Wen Mao is the author of two collections of poetry, Oculus from Grey Wolf Press, a finalist for the Los Angeles Times Book Prize and Mad Honey Symposium from Alice James Books. The recipient of a Pushcart Prize, she was recently a Coleman Fellow at the New York Public Library, a Jenny McKean Moore writer and writer in um, and residence at the George Washington University and a sharing fellow at the Black Mountain Institute. She is a Kundiman fellow in both poetry and fiction. Uh, please welcome Sally. Hi, thank you. Thank you all. I am just so moved by your readings and it's it's just so good to see all of your faces in, in one little grid. <laughs> like I I um I love the geography that we cover. Um okay, so I, I'm mushrooms and here here's a packet of shiitake mushrooms. Um and with these shiitake mushrooms, I offer you a new vision in the new year. I offer you an attainable vision of a future that thrives on communion and connection rather than fracture. Mushrooms nourish the community. Mushrooms also symbolize community because they cannot thrive without the thriving of other species in their ecosystems. Mushrooms make visions where they were chasms before. I offer you a psychedelic mushroom dream of a better world come to life, a fungal revival of hope. Um, so I'm going to read this poem called Wet Market. <laughs> Wet Market. From youth, I was taught that fresh meant alive until the moment you buy it. My mother used to pick up chickens at the wet market, slit the throats herself. 
At four, I helped her defeather the fowl, drain its blood in a vat. My parents barely ate meat until the 1980s. In re-education camps, they ate ground pork once a year. In America, we don't buy live chickens, but my mother always wanted to see the fish alive head on before we take it home. Chaff was the best sustenance, the eyes, the head, the scales. At 12, I returned for the first time to Wuhan. In the wet market, I touch live snapping turtles, frogs and vats, smell the musk of open air stalls. You want your meat squirming and slippery, not the squids and king conch packed in ice. The butcher slices an eel in half. I squint in disbelief at the dying I witness. Live kill, slit eel, slit eyes. I've been called back home. My sight line, a bloodless gash. Wet markets flourish with produce, feeding a generation. Mine, the offspring of those who starved like my father in their mother's wombs. Now pundits call for their ban, citing barbarian diets, raccoons, offal, civet cats, bushmeat, not spinach or wood ear, plums and star apples. At the Berkeley farmer's market, no one, bats, and I. How lovely it must be to possess a body cleaved of hunger and horrors, its stench so inherently clean. Nightly, I dream of Angel Island's quarantine station, my immigrant body scrubbed raw with carbolic soap, my immigrant belongings fumigated in sulfur steam. The evening I saw death, we ate eel braised with bitter melon, drowned it in cloudy broth. To this day, the memory how I tasted marrow, like an elegy, frozen in bone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sally. Um, I love the visceral qualities of that poem and like how we could feel and hear and taste everything and to bring us to detention of like, um, like the pleasures and erotics of like food as well as like the horrors of it too. And it's so it's such a timely poem too with everything that's happening right now um, and heightens a few xenophobic sentiments, um, anti-Asian attacks um, and just like the whole complicated system of it and bringing it back to, um, you know, the I love what you said about the fungal ecosystem in which we live and how we thrive. So thank you so much for that. Um, our last reader for um, today before we go into the Q&A is Kathy, who um, is our watercress slash arugula um, for this event. Born in a year of the monkey, Kathy Lin Che is the author of Splits, and she works as the executive director at Kundimon and lives in New York City. Please welcome Kathy. Everybody, thank you so much. Um, so I chose watercress because I had a bunch of watercress in the fridge because I was making this Vietnamese watercress salad, um, but I ate it all. So I have arugula. <laughs> um, I also don't have a hot pot, but I have a pot and that goes in. And also this watercress, this is not watercress, but it's also in my fridge. So it, it approximates watercress, it's bok choy. So that goes in and then out it's like a cooking show out comes out oh it's it's now steamed um yay so thank you so much muriel for hosting this um amazing event it's so nice to eat with everybody i miss eating and being around the hot pot table with you all i grew up in la so i miss the sgb food group thank you all for coming i have had many a beautiful hot pot with so many people in this room and people who i don't know but um, we, I hope that the poetry and the Zoom is feeding you all. Um, 
And yeah, I just want to say thank you all for gathering. Thank you for my beautiful, inspiring uh, fellow poets for being here as well, as well as just everybody for gathering in community. So y'all are looking cute. So thank you. Um, so watercress, I looked up on healthline.com and it has many health benefits. My In my family, food is very medicinal. So um, it says, um, that watercress is excellent for bone health, eye health, as well as heart health, very metaphorical. Um, so I want, I offer you this watercress, lol. Um, um, with this watercress, I wish you a year of keeping ourselves and each other upright, i.e. bone health, wishing ourselves a year of clear seeing the eye health and wishing everyone most of all strength and tenderness of heart. Um, Oh, chúc mừng năm mới, các em ơi. Um, wishing you all um, a year of um, uh, health and um, income redistribution. So um, hopefully, I hope that um, everybody who is in need gets what they need this year. Uh, this is a poem that I wrote um, called Meals, and I have been cooking a lot during the pandemic, and my mom sent me her cookbook, so it's a meditation on food and family, and yeah, thank you Chosen Family for being here, um, it means a lot to me. Meals. I hear the wet click of bones unfastening, my mother's hands slick with fat, green the cold leaves that stuck to my hands when I washed them in the silver bowl. Translucent, the cartilage between my teeth. The whole burnt summer, I tasted nopales, I tasted the earth. Tortillas warmed over the stove, arrows pointed from the burner. A slice of American cheese melted in between. Martha chopped the onions, spraying acid. Jose watched tomatillos from their paper skins. The hands my father used to draw blood pressed hard against my mother's. I tasted a knife I'd lick clean. Aunt Bay left a plate of fruit bedside. I stained my thumbnail with its sap. When I left, I smelled Da salt air, the ocean like a bath, everyone out before 7 a.m., before the sun could crisp our skin like roast duck, before I became coffee with condensed milk. This is when I begin, when history teaches an apprentice that he is less than a bowl of rice, when hunger blends his growth and gnaws down the fat so that he is all sinew and muscle, raising three fleshy Americans. When ice is a luxury to water down beer, then I begin with quail feed and pig feed, with fish netted from the sea, with scales that shimmer against the porcelain sink. I begin with two brothers. Around the kitchen table, we become strangers. I gnaw on the bones like a good dog. They food network into the bourgeoisie. Once I dreamt I was swallowed by a snake. The snake was an immigrant household. When did they become unimmigrant? We fill our stomachs until they bell. We eat until we peel. We unsecret our history. We write out our meager mouths. Thank you. Oh, this is also to my Highland Park, LA. Big love to Martha and Lorenzo uh, Sanchez, who also raised me with their food as well. So happy new year, everybody. Big, big love. Thank you for that. That's such a wonderful end to this reading portion of the event, Kathy. Thank you for like giving us this image of this banquet, um, for like shouting out like different forms of communities for everyone who read today. Um, I think what's so special about um, what everyone's read and everyone's offering is that it's just so different. But I think what's we're, what feels united is a sense of um, like wanting to bestow something of openness and possibility and community spirit um, for this new year. And it's definitely something that feels like um, maybe like a different kind of turn from the kind of year that we're having. Um, so thank you so much for that. 
And I do want to mention as we go into the Q&A portion of this event that I neglected to mention that earlier um, that if you are an artist, organizer, cultural worker who is um, working with different actions um, in support of Asian American communities that are also trying to not re replicate anti-Blackness in these actions, um, please share those resources in the chat box, um, link to that there and also share what cities they're in so that those who are in this event um, and want to partake in them will be able to know. Um, please also share um, restaurants and Asian businesses, Asian BIPOC businesses that you um, frequent. We shared a little bit of that um, as we're promoting this event, but we want to keep that conversation going. For instance, today um, I had um, my hot pot um, ingredients from uh, Tasty Steam Kitchen, which is in Oakland, California. Um, so definitely please, um, please uh, shout those out in the chat box as well. Um, so as we go into the Q&A portion, um, please feel free to unmute your um, video or audio if you have a question. Um, and uh, be sure to also um, put your questions in the chat if you have, um, if you have a question. Um, if you are so hungry after this reading that you have to go right now too, that's also totally fine. But I think one thing that I do want um, our readers to talk about today and any of you who are in the audience um, who want to share today too, um, this question of why food? Why is food important um, to not just today, but to um, our poetic spirit, um, to um, making movement um, in this world? Um, what, why is food important to you? We can also extend this too to um, a lot of you shared some of the ingredients um, for today that are really important to you. So I wonder if anyone also wants to elaborate on their ingredient as well. Um, hi, I want, can I ask a question too? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I was wondering what people, I don't know if this is a bad topic, but I'm just curious if people feel like, um, you know, when I was young and I was in high school, I didn't, I, I was wary of um, Asian American writing uh, around food because I felt like um, Asian Americans are super defined by, you know, like, for instance, I get a phrase a lot like, oh, you're Vietnamese, I love pho, All right? Like, cool. Um, but yeah, if there's ever any sense of, you know, so like the poem I wrote is probably one of the only poems I have about food. And I was wondering if people ever feel that that um, anxiety around writing food because of the kind of historical association with like who you are with like the food that your culture, you know, brings. <laughs> Ooh, Jane, you feel that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah. Chen, you go first. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, thank you for bringing that up, Kathy. Absolutely. I definitely feel that anxiety. Um, and I remember this was like maybe two years ago when I gave a reading um, so at the University of Illinois. Um, and I read this poem called In the City, which is dedicated to Monica Soak, um, this wonderful, wonderful poet. Um, and in it, I mentioned making dumplings with my mother. Um, and I try to approach that scene and that subject in the poem in a complicated way. Um, and then afterward, um, at the signing, uh, this uh, white audience guy came up to me and um, like highlighted that poem, <laughs> which I was like, oh, that's so nice. Um, but then mentioned uh, how much uh, he loves dumplings. <laughs> that was like his main comment to me. Uh, and then he's like, I'm gonna go and make dumplings with my Chinese friend now. <laughs> and I'm like, all of that was very unnecessary for you to tell me <laughs> in this moment. Um, 
And so it just like made me realize though that like, oh, no matter how I tried to write this, it will be received anyway in a particular way um, by uh, white readers or listeners um, because that's how they're used to consuming, right, our work. Um, and so it was actually like, even though I was um, disappointed and anxious in that moment, um, upon further reflection, I was like, you know what, this is a subject that I do want to write about. I do want to explore this however I can. Um, I think part of it was also feeling like, oh, I'm not going to do this justice. Um, and so I think it's just taken me more time, but I feel like it's, it's something that I've started to explore a lot more recently. I can see the chat and everyone's like, we all know that guy. <laughs> I know that guy. I think my my white audience member, it was about pig's feet, like pigs, like blood, blood in a poem of mine. Um, but yeah, thanks for that, Chen. I feel like this the same way. Um, it always feels kind of like scary and Kathy, you're saying too, to kind of like write about the thing that is so easily like identifiable as, you know, Asian in like a poem or a short story. I'm a restaurant baby. I grew up in food, quite literally. Like I went from the hospital to the restaurant. I don't know how I wasn't covered in oil. Um, you know, um, I used to bathe in a meat bucket, you know, where they used to marinate the meat. I would just, I wouldn't be in the meat, but I would just, you know, like we would reuse it for like, you know, wash it out. And then like, I would like sit in there on a hot day um, in the parking lot. But anyway, so I, I thought to myself, like, you know, like why have I been avoiding writing about being a restaurant baby, growing up around food, like everything is about food, you know, and there's there's so much joy around food. I will say, because, you know, I love Kuniman so utterly much. I didn't really have an Asian American community prior to Kuniman. And I remember when I went to Kuniman for the first time, um, there's a giant feast, you know, at, it's just like a bunch of takeout, um, delicious takeout. But uh, I think that day there was, there weren't any utensils for some reason. Like there weren't like um, forks, chopsticks, spoons, nothing. There were only like cups. And so silently, everyone just like dug into the noodles with the cups and just like, just like started like throwing back noodles completely silently like it wasn't like a funny thing it wasn't like a oh we should do this it was just like natural and like I thought to myself like okay yeah everything's about food um and I love that and I love Kundiman and I love all of you uh and this also got me thinking about um the relationship between food and um, organization and resistance, um, um, like a lot of one of the most, I guess, common forms of protest we've seen is the hunger strike, right? And um, and I've been doing some research on the the immigration station that I mentioned in my poem in Angel Island. Um, one of the first uh, signs of rebellion. Uh, in in the uh, in the immigrants who were who were detained there was a was a food riot um, or like a food protest where they like I think a lot of the Chinese immigrants hated the food and so they 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 did they organized a demonstration in the mess hall and um, and I think they they also they also began this hunger strike where. They just stopped. They just stopped going to the mess hall, and and that, and then and then the result of that protest uh, was was that the, the the menu did change after that. Um, so before all the food, all the food was like the the cheapest, uh, like worst food that you can imagine, and then and then after they staged the protest, the 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 menu finally changed. So. That's so incredible, Sally. I love I love food as organizing. Yeah, thank you for making that connection um, again to like abolition work too. Um, and definitely like hunger strikes, it's been like a very um, big force and big tool um, in like in, in that work. 
Um, so thank you for highlighting that too. I think that what um, a lot of you have shared is that like when it comes to food and um, Asian American writing, it's always been something that's a little complicated because I think um, it seems like from at least white audiences, the expectation is that food is easy or like Asian food and, and much as like Asian identity is something that's like very easily consumable. But in the experiences that you all share today, even just now, um, it clearly isn't. And it's um, something that's very complex. Um, and that is something that um, is like not easily digestible. And so um, the challenge now it seems is to write about food that resists that like easily consumable um, nature that like white audiences are likely to try to um, approach um, Asian American identity and food. So um, I think that that's like a very important challenge to each of us, um, but also um, events like today um, hopefully um, present like a wide array of ways in which we can engage. Um, so yeah. Um, I was thinking a little bit about too, about what some of you have shared um, in your offerings today. And I wonder if there's um, any part of your offerings that you wanted to talk more about um, or to elaborate on um, for those in the audience. Um, if there's um, specific wishes that have come up for you just in listening to each other today, um, as far as your desires for the new year, um, especially since we're talking about social and political, um, aspirations to what do we want to see moving forward that we haven't seen yet in 2021? Can I talk a little bit about the offerings? Um, so Oh, wait, let me get my microphone over here and move it over here. Okay, so um, something about the, what'd you say? Um, I think it's important, right, when we do the work of writing about food to really think about the way that we think about it outside of the easily consumable context, right? And I think just listening to everybody giving their offerings, I think that was a demonstration of how to do that today, right? Like we each had an offering that we did not um, come at it from thinking about how will I be able, like we didn't think about how the white audience would consume it. We were simply offering and thinking about what does this offering mean, right? So for me, it was like, hey, like this is community to me, right? Because, you know, I don't like doing the whole picking apart a carcass before I put it in my mouth thing. So I'm like, I'm gonna let Michelle do that, <laughs> um, right? But then, so then that meaning then starts to transcend any kind of, con you know, consumable, um, identitarian thing, you know? And and so basically, you know, I, I guess my offering would be like, I would just urge us to continue to do that for our food as we go about it, you know, thinking about language as a possibility for us to make all these different kinds of metaphors and everything. Um, and so that's why the poems here are so dope because we're all thinking about that all the time. I think we're already doing it. But then even considering how do we keep doing that in other ways, like if we just approach our entire lives as, you know, a poetic space and continue to think about what is the metaphors that exist here, what is possible for me to make this mean something beyond what is normally meant or what is appropriable, right, then that's, um, you know, a, a thing we can do. So that's my offering is let's just keep living that poetic life. Um, however it manifests for you. Even if you don't write poetry, you can still do that language work, which is also a kind of theoretical work. Yeah, I love that, Kasumi. Thank you for that. What about other folks? I just wanted to offer everyone the fattiest piece because I wanted I want everyone to have richness in their lives, you know, like to have um, I don't know, I, I mean not to like make it about the white audience, but I just think it's like I feel like 
um, the fatty part is something that white people don't eat or like the gristle or like the, the parts that are seen as undesirable or whatever. I'm like, give me all those parts. And I want all of those parts for all of us because we know how valuable they are and delicious. And I guess I just wanted um, to offer more deliciousness and lusciousness because things are hard and where, wherever we can find the richness and lusciousness in, in our lives and that we can share with each other, I think is that that's like, sometimes it's all you can do if you can even access that, you know? And it's like really the whole thing about food for me, like, you know, I think like all Asian parents are like this, maybe, I don't know. I feel like there could be a survey taken, but it's like the first question, if it's not about money, it's about have you eaten? <laughs> and like, I just, you know, both things being about your sustenance and your survival. And I want for us to have more than survival. I want us to have thriving lusciousness. So that was what I was thinking about with sliced beef. I can say a few things too. Um, I really love the tagline for this event, Muriel, too, which is have you eaten yet? With Which is it's also just like from the community. I mean, I worked in communications before. It's just very clever. I love it. But also, but also it's like, you know, like what I miss most about the poetry events or having art events in person is actually not just the event, but like afterwards we'd go eat together and we would ask like, hey, have you eaten yet? And then we would either the three options were, um, no, I haven't. Where are we going? Or um, I have, but I'll watch you eat or I have, but I can eat again. <laughs> Those are like the three things that always happens. And then we would go to some place, right? Um, and that's just what I love so much about like this feeling of this event too. And Michelle, you're talking about the fatty beef actually reminded me that for the three years I was living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania um, for grad school, there was only one restaurant that I could find that did the fatty pork over rice. It was the one Taiwanese restaurant in the whole city. And I went there all the time. And every time I sat down and, and ordered that, I don't think anyone else ever ordered it. The, the person, it was Roasty Cafe, because he was driving Roasty Cafe in Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh. Um, they would, the wait, the wait staff would ask me like, this is, there's fat on this. Like, are you sure you want it? And this is something they had to learn to tell people, because I think there are a lot of um, patrons who weren't aware of that and we didn't like of course wouldn't like it so I just like that just kind of recalled this memory to me but just thinking I'm just I think I'm like my mind is like everywhere right now but some of the things are coming up in our conversation I'm just thinking about when we write like and because what Kumi's Kazumi's saying about like why these poems are so powerful is that I feel like when I listen to these, we know exactly who we're writing to and it's to all of us, right? The people we love so dearly and in which we don't have to explain ourselves. We just kind of know. Like this kind of thing is kind of not identifiable. Like what the hell is this? But we know what this is. <laughs> you know? So it's like stuff that we don't have to explain. Um, I also have the last thing I'll say before I like stop talking is um, I have on my phone background, you can't see it, but it's actually a photo of, me, Kim, who is, who is, I believe, in should be somewhere in Dan Lau's housemates video. Kim, hi, Kim, and Dara and Nihi. And these are photos that we found from KSW's like archives. There's two different photos and it was two different years and we're positioned in the exact same way um, in front of the snack table. It's like, across two different years. And I made it into a meme, I said, it doesn't really make sense. It's when time flies, when friendship fries, and I covered it with French fries. But the point is, there's like, there's something I loved so much about seeing this photo of us like through the years, and we're just still around like the snack table. You're like, you know who you are, like at the art events, and you're like, you're just like, where are the snacks? Um, anyways, I'll stop talking. I just like, I love y'all. That's all. I'm done. Thank you for that. I think um, I just want to echo all these messages about abundance and about um, persisting as we are in all um, our complexity um, and never having to feel like our uh, messages and the way we make meaning in this world has to be obligated to um, any mainstream ideas of identity. 
um, and that simply being who we are is enough. Um, so thank you for these messages of enough and abundance and for um, offering each of you the fattiest pieces of what we have um, in this time in which like we are thinking about distribution, economic distribution, social distribution. Um, may this also carry forth into the way we move through the world and through our art. So thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, I hope if you have not hot pot it today that this event inspires you to do that. Um, some more, do it with your friends virtually, um, do it with your family um, if you can. And um, it was really great to see and eat with all of you. Thank you so much. This event will be, is recorded. And so it will be posted online at a certain point with captions so that you can all view it and share it. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. And I hope um, this event has left you full Bye. Is there an after party? <laughs> we'll go to Asuka. The after party is at our house. Thank you so much, Muriel. Thank you, Muriel. Thank you, Muriel. Perpetually after party. <laughs> I want boba, I want noodle. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>